Got one quick question. Yeah. What are some of the keys to defending a quarterback who wants to get out of the pocket and create off schedule? Yeah, I, I think um, number one, being aware of your rush lanes. Okay. You know, and that doesn't mean, hey, you run here, you run here, you run here, you run here. <laughs> because that's not the game, you don't coach robots. Yeah. But having an understanding of, hey, this guy got high on his rush, well, hey, when you feel him, adjust, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, maybe some, some called games of some natural games mm -hmm. and be able to work the pocket where you're still coming after him, mm -hmm. but in a way at which everybody's working together in a coordinated rush without making it um, robotic and manufactured. I think that's number one. The number two is like off schedule downs, we are kind of talking about that. Like, how how you're able to handle off schedule down. You call this coverage and everybody's where the needs to be, but then all of a sudden the play is six seconds long, mm -hmm. seven seconds long, eight seconds, and all of a sudden break, receivers break away from leverage or they go to certain assigned spots and how your coverage can rotate with that and match and adjust to that when the plays become off schedule. Like those are probably two of the most critical things. This was a, a defense that had some issues with <clears throat> some of the mobile quarterbacks last year, which I know that's not unique to the Niners. Kyler Murray's and Russell Wilson's give everybody problems, but do, do you feel like there's an advantage to being able to see that in practice on a day-to-day -day basis now. Uh, yeah, when putting yeah, I, I think absolutely there's an advantage to that. I think that you, you know, I'm not going to be, you know, not say that 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 that, that matters. It does, and uh, being aware of that matters. And, and you brought up the point, hey, when the ones are up versus when the twos are up, you see it, right? Yeah. You you recognize it when you're watching, and fans at practice should recognize it and see that it's that it's different, and that's not good or bad, different. Um, it's not like one's better than the other, but it's different. And I think anytime you can replicate things naturally without having to um, draw a scout card week one or week whatever when you're prepping for the Cardinal and tell the quarter and put a receiver at quarterback and have him just run around and scramble, right? Um, because you're trying to replicate. When you don't have to do that, that means something that's important because all of a sudden it's just untimed downs, right? Kyler, you know, it's not like he just runs around to run. He runs around to, to try to dice you up in the back end. And the same with Russell. Went against both of them. And that's what they do. They're, they're going to they're gonna buy time. They're going to extend plays because they want to make you pay. And when you can naturally replicate that in practice, naturally get it, then all of a sudden the teaching's cleaner, the teaching's clearer. It's just what we do because, hey, we saw it, right? Just kind of like the motion. That's why I brought that up. It's kind of like what you do and it's how you see it. So... Um, it matters, yeah. Is, what, it, is, that something Kyle, oh, sorry. <clears throat> is that something Kyle brought up to you uh, when, when bringing you in here? Like, hey, this was an area that we that we need to clean up. And was it apparent to you when you watched film, just in terms of defending more, more mobile quarterbacks? Yeah, I, you know, we, we had talks about, you know, a bunch of things and what he envisioned me doing and um, talked with D'Amico a lot about what he envisioned me doing here. And um, I think those conversations are what sold me on wanting to be here. Um, just had to get your hand in the pile and be a part of it. And whatever that role is, that's that's second to being with good people and being able to have a, a place that um, the position and title doesn't like that didn't matter with this with picking a picking a place. It mattered about people. It mattered about what I how much I felt like I could personally grow and how much I could contribute. You know, those are the things that have, were valued to me. What can I learn? What can I grow? How can I grow? Then when D'Amico needs me for something, I'm there. Whatever it is, you know? And um, um, so, we, yeah, we had conversations about some different, you know, different things. And um, whether it was a certain scheme or whether it was just in general day to day. Where's, go ahead. Sorry, what, what's been your early impression of just actually seeing Fred Warner in person and what he does moving yeah. around and just, I guess, how, what's been your impression of how he affects space and, and quarterbacks' eyes? Yeah. Um, someone asked me that earlier, and I, um, that I walked by just about players, right? And and I'll say this: I've, I've been fortunate to be around a Robert Mathis, Dwight Freeney, um, Patrick Peterson, some elite guys that'll probably wear jackets someday. And here's the thing that I always recognize: like, was it didn't matter that Pat had played in our system for five years. The guy was still there taking notes. He was still locked in. He was still engaged. Same thing, Robert Mathis. This guy, I mean, he has a hundred, like, like a hundred sacks in his career, and he's working an individual like he don't have any. And you see the same with Fred. He's been in the system for a while. If you go and observe him in a meeting room, 
he's taking crazy notes. He's locked in. He's engaged. Go and you go to a walkthrough. If you were here and watched our walkthrough, you'd see a guy that's in a great stance, great communicator. He comes to the sidelines talking about details on a call he's probably had 200 times, but he's still going to make sure all the details are right. Um, then when he plays, we, we know he plays, but, but part of the playing is part of the process. How you doing? How do you play? That's part of the process. So you, he gets what he gets when he plays because of how he works the process. And what a great example for our young players. So the thing that sticks out to me is you walk in a room and, when, you know, just like you guys, you've been around it enough, you know, like a good reporter asking good questions probably, right? Or someone that's maybe not working at it, right? You know what I mean? Like you kind of know that as a coach too, like as a player, like that's what it looks like.